so, but stay. Huh? So what we discussed today, won't, there won't be questions explicitly about what we discussed now, but don't go away. <laughs> Uh, so what we'll do is a bit, okay, quickly review what we, what we had yesterday. I want to show another model because I think it's interesting for uh, this same type of behavior um, of, an air, of an order book. And I'll try to wrap up what we discussed and give you what, how, how I see it, how things are connected. So <laughs> I hope it's not only me who will see at the end, but we'll see this. So um, what we discussed yesterday were... Uh, this idea of, uh, okay, that we want to model um, that we have seen the square root impact in the market and we want to give some microscopic description that could lead to this. So the idea, so, so actually the name of these models, but it's not clear from this point yet, I mean, it was latent order book models. So the idea was to, okay, to get something which can be handled microscopically or in an agent-based manner. Uh, and so where we started from, so just to, to make things clear, what we said, okay, we see, um, we see an order book. So what, what we see is that empirically, an order book, so I'm, I'm very much uh, in, a, in a caricatural way, you have some type of behavior, like so it's a price and volume as you always draw, is somehow like this. This behavior, but we measure a square root impact of meta orders. So there are two things which seem to be in contradiction one with the other because there is some geometric reasoning. If the impact is square root, how should the volume look like? And this is what we measure. So, so this is somehow contradicts uh, square root impact. And so then the idea that we came up is, okay, maybe this is what we see in the market, but, but there are simple reasoning that we can do some in a very trivial economic way. The further you go away from the market, uh, from, the price, from the current price, the more people would be ready to trade there. It's, it's very basic reasoning. So if the price is very high, people, more people want to sell. So, 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 okay, some basic economic reasoning said that, <coughs> that volume should grow with uh, the distance from, uh, okay, I think I put it something like this. Let's say P0 is now the price. The further you go away, the more volume there should be in both directions. Okay, so, and so there we came up with the idea, okay, so let's try to model something that we might not see and then, then think about why we don't see it, but, but let's say that there can be latent variables in the world. And let's model a latent order book, which is not what we see, but something much deeper, which, uh, so we had some idea that it should be somehow like this. So very close to the current price, actually, it should match what we do see because, well, it obviously has to match, but at further away, things, uh, things can be different. So this was, this was the idea, I just wanted to stress it. It's a, it's a simple idea, but what one has to, come up with it, so that you say that there are these, uh, okay, so, so somehow uh, these would be intentions, right? That might not materialize, or might have already materialized. In that case, you, you see them in the visual, visible book. They might materialize later or, or, or never. I mean, this, this is sort of long-term intentions of people, and, and we came up with a simple model for this, so this, this deposition-like model, we said that, okay, so let's start with something, putting zero thinking into it. I mean, thinking from the parts of, from par, uh, for the agents or particles, and so we said, okay, and, and see if that can help. If it doesn't work, of course, one wants to put complicate life, but we said, okay, let's do a deposition type of model. With, where we had a lambda and the new, so a deposition and an evaporation. So which evaporation defines a typical lifetime. And by hand, we added something to it, which was diffusivity <coughs> of prices, so which is somehow the effect of market orders, which, which uh, it's, not very, it's not very elegant, right? We, we add something by hand, it's, it, it breaks a bit the, the microscopic description. 
But okay, we, and we had some results from this. Is that, uh, that, that, that there is a linear profile close to, the, close to the price. So indeed you find in a simple model like this something that behaves linear close to the, close to the current price. And another thing is, and we'll get back to this sooner, and another which sort of comes from this, that, that uh, vanishingly small uh, volumes at, uh, well, at, at, at best, okay? At, at the best quotes, so, so, so uh, close to the price. This is for the language. Is it clear what I wrote here? So it's not at best vanishingly, but at the best. Okay, uh, so okay, there's two things that you get out from a very simple model which are sort of non-trivial. And, uh, and actually, okay, so we have a linear profile, but of course, one can think about what's the width of this linear profile. And it will be somehow related to, to, to the volatility on time scale one over nu, okay? So we the only time scale we have in the system is, is one over nu, which is, uh, which is the typical lifetime of this, or the memory time of this, 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 this book. And so the width of this profile will be, will, will be on, well, one can write up properly the equations, it will be the typical price move on this time scale. Now, of course, here we have to think, so well, okay, there is a model, it gives something linear somewhere, and it is not what we see for the volume itself. So you have to think, okay, so what, what for, for a model like this to work to match data, it means that by the square root impact type of behavior, so some linearity in, in, in an invisible volume is, over, is, is, is on relatively long time scales, you can measure it. On short time scales as well, but also on daily time scales or several days. So which suggests that, okay, if you want to map this model to a real world, then somehow this, this time scale that, that you get has to be the time scale of slow players in the market. So people who are there and who really have an idea of what this price is going to do on one day, 10 days, something like this, and not people who are actually, you could call them high frequency traders, uh, in newspaper you can read, who are just there very close to the price and, and placing uh, on a millisecond scale for, for minor gains. So it, it gives you an idea of how you can map this type of model to, to, to a real world, okay? So this was what we saw yesterday, and okay, so, well, from the linear profile uh, it comes, but okay, let's be explicit. So you, it suggests that you have the square root impact. So you, you have everything that you sort of want because you have a square root impact, you have very low liquidity close to the best price, meaning that there will be, in a practical sense, there will be autocorrelation of signs because if you want to trade, you have to trade in several steps. But what was, okay, well, but, but, but the thing that was surely a bit missing from this is that, okay, but there was this put in by hand, so there was nothing really to lead to it, and so we had to come up with a numerical model, okay? Uh, so I wanted to, 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 to discuss another way to, 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 to get to this, and okay, so, so, this, so okay, I didn't discuss now explicitly, I said it yesterday, that the fact that you, you have this uh, linear profile actually depends on the fact that, that there is this diffusive motion that eats the volume, which is just sitting there, lambda and nu. Uh, so, 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 so there was this, this model, and what we, what we can do is one is that we, what we did yesterday, okay, come up with some numerical enrichment of the model, and, uh, and study that. Okay, it can help, it's good to have a numerical model. The other thing is to, to ch change the model a bit and, um, and add some things that make it more consistent and make it analytically tractable. So I, actually I will show slides I think today for a while to be faster. We had a lot of stuff. So this is what we have seen yesterday, okay. 
Um, okay. And then, okay, and another comment, of course, that, but it, it's sort of obvious, but since we have only this time scale in this, one over this new in time scale in the book, but anything that happens on longer times will have a linear impact, for example. So, so, so all memory is killed after this time. It's obvious. So, okay, so, so I wanted to discuss a more consistent model. So th these models, by the way, are, are, are very recent. So these are from between 2012 and 2018, the different these models that I'm discussing here. So okay, so, so this is what I just said. So this latent order, order book type of model gives insights. So, so you, you get an idea of what you're looking for, uh, but there is this strong assumption of diffusive prices and, uh, and, and the rest we just uh, discussed. So I want to show another type of family, which is extremely, so the, the idea behind it, so, so, so these first uh, three points, actually the first four, almost four points are the same. So, so you want to model this volume in the, in the background, but we, we change a bit the system, and instead of just having a deposition lambda here of, 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 of uh, something, you, you try to model two types of particles. So, so we want to model a sort of reaction diffusion system, so where you have particles which are to buy and to sell, which if they meet, they, they, they react, they, they kill each other. Um, and we'll get, try to get to, to, to describe similar systems. So, so, so this is the, the actions that we are discussing. So it's very similar, but slightly, slightly, slightly more complicated. Okay, we have a deposition of, of, of uh, rain of new intentions, whatever, they are particles falling. With lambda, again, uh, we simplify this lambda doesn't depend on, on uh, distance. Uh, okay, by the way, a comment here that, uh, of course, we discussed a bit of how lambda and nu has to behave for this to hold, but it's a very large, very wide uh, range of, 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 of behavior. So just you have rain of particles, you modulate it. Actually, in this case, we'll just use a heavy side, meaning that one type of particles fall on one side, the other part of particles fall on the other side. You could have some other type of function, but of course you want to have a, 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 some increasing function in one direction. You have a cancellation, which can, can be some partial or complete uh, with, some, uh, with some lifetime, exactly as before. But what we add is these two things. So first of all, you add a, you add a diffusion of the particles themselves, and you will add a type of drift, which, which we'll discuss. So this could be somehow reassessment of prices. So someone is sitting, a, a particle fell somewhere, then he can change his position or she can change her position afterwards. It's like, okay, you change the idea of where you want to be. And it will have two parts. So there will be some part which is, uh, which is agent specific. So each, each of them diffuses. And this will contribute some diffusion coefficient. But also we will add a common component. So it's, this one needs to do to, to, for things to work. So we also had at some type of, okay, you could think about it as a collective information, but somehow everyone's shifting in direction or other. So some process V. And okay, of course, if this V, underlying V is a white noise, then, uh, I mean, you, you can set this V whatever so, so to make the, the final price diffuse it. So this is a bit still by hand, but okay, so you have these two, so you have a drift which is from V, and of course, if V is diffusive, then, then the drift is diffusive, and, and there's agent-specific diffusion. And okay, and you have transactions, so what, what we do not put by hand some market orders in, but we say is okay, so, so there is with some rate, okay, this, we will consider a high rate, but with some probability, when they meet, they, they kill each other, they eat each other. Okay, so it's, well, it's traditional reaction diffusion type of model. And, uh, and then that's it. I think that's clear, yeah? What, sorry? Yeah. Yes, but I'll, I'll, what I will consider that actually, so this is a drift, I mean, this is whatever, a V which drifts everyone, but it need not be a, a, a a constant drift. So I will define VT to be a white noise. Yeah, so, so it's, it's, a, it's a noise behavior that pushes everyone noise to follow it. Time. Noise in time. Not in space. Not in space. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I hope I understand.
understand your question. <laughs> Exactly, it's different in different time steps, so it's not a traditional uh, drift, but it's but collective. Exactly. Yeah. So, it's okay, it's, it's not a very, I mean, it's, it's hard to solve these models, but, or sometimes hard, but it's, it's easy to understand. So, okay, I, I, I don't want to go very much into to all the details, but okay, so you can write up the, the equation of motion as we did yesterday, it's not very different. What, what are the differences? You have two equations. Well, okay, it's different. So you have two equations. You will have an equation for B and for A. So this is again the density of the equation of motion for the density. So okay, let's go from here. So here there are things which are the same as before, these middle three terms. So there will be a diffusion term. Okay? There are exactly as yesterday. There will be an evaporation term exactly as yesterday and the deposition term similar to yesterday. So we have a heavy side here because, but okay. And the two things that are new is one is that you, you have this, well, this drift component, which, which we just discussed, which will be uh, the same on the two sides. And okay, and you have this reaction components, which is exactly the same term, of course, in the two sides. So it's a rate kappa. There is this annihilation of the two particles. So this, this is a hard thing that we have. So the reaction is actually in the same time. Sorry? Exactly. And we'll try to eliminate it in practice for the equations because it's hard to handle reactions. We set the problem. So we set the problem. We are writing the model. So we decide what, what we say is that it's a, okay. What we will in practice say is that k is infinite. So it's, it's, it's probability one if a and if two particles a and b meet, they eat each other. And actually, if we put a heavy side here, then it can only be at the, at the front of the two, at the rea there is only one reaction front where they can meet. But one could generalize and make life harder, but it wouldn't change the main things. So, so and of course, uh, there is, uh, why? yeah, okay, so, so here we have a PT. On the heavy side, of course, the, the definition of this price is where the, the two, where the reaction front, where the density of the two, type of particles is the same and, and they actually this is well in this system yes it's mid price but actually in a system like this there is no reason to have any other price than than one so if if there are particles uh, diffusing and they annihilate when they meet then okay for for for, for well behave so uh, unless nu is some some extremely uh, large it, it should be only one point where they where they meet, so it shouldn't be a line. So okay, this is a bit harder to this is hard to handle this because we have direction, but of course we don't care about the, the behavior of everything. What we care is uh, is uh, is the price, essentially, or things close to it. So what we will do is is, is simply we won't won't want to do look at the dynamics of row A and row B. Is it okay that I use slides and I don't write up here most of the things? Is, so we don't want them separately, but if you actually look, you say what you care about, some, for some reason I wrote a phi here instead of rho, but whatever. So phi, so you look at the difference between these two densities, you get, you get this equation. So you, can, you, can, you don't care about the, the, the actual details of the reaction anymore, right? What this means is that, okay, you had a, you always thought about the, so, so just, just to understand what we had in mind, it was somehow like, these type of volumes, of course, uh, how will it be fine? We will have something, so actually this will redefine somehow the, the, the density. So on one side we'll call it positive, the other negative. So what do we have? Uh, well, we have exactly what we had before, here, here, and here. But it will be only the sign. So I mean, it's trivial what you do here from the heavy side, we get the sign, and we, we eliminated the, the reaction term, okay? And we can also make life easier that we change a bit the reference frame. So you want to move in the reference frame, frame of this, uh, this what we call drift, so VT. So what we do is simply we redefine 
a new price, which is what we had before, so, so which is x minus p hat, where p hat is the integral of, uh, over time of this, of this drift, okay? It's clear. Is it clear? P hat t is the integral of uh, up to now of of of, uh, of this v, which is so this let's say drift term. But what we simply do is okay, there is everyone shifting like this. We take off this this collective. We, we put ourselves in the reference of of this uh, collective uh, motion. We need to choose a. Since we have a vast extended space region, which yeah. is doing something, but we need to choose a point when we have to set some reference. So it's clear, I mean, we are integrating over time, but there is no mention in that expression about the, that special point. So the a boundary about condition. About the reference point with respect to which. But at some given point, you're somewhere, and from so, so then on, you, you, you th there is a collective motion that you don't really care about. What you do is simply take this out of the system. Okay. So, so what you get is, is this. So, uh, uh, this has been removed. Okay, now we are back to a system that actually we have seen, sort, sort of a system that we have seen before. So, indeed, you get something which is the same that we had yesterday, right? So we didn't have to put it in by hand what we had, and we got back what we got back a local linear profile. So just I had in mind something. So so what do you have here? Said so that the stationary shape of the book. Okay, we have it written this way. So for y being negative, uh, it will be this, and it will be well, this way the inverse uh, on the other side. And so what is this? It means that. That, that 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 the profile will be linear close to close to the best i don't know if i discuss this and there will be so, so there will be a, a width of the linear region will be so so width of linear i think it's it, i don't know if i use the same uh, notation but it will be something like like this Okay, so again, you have one over, it's the same stuff. One over new is the lifetime, this is the diffusion, so diffusion on, on this time scale. Um, and so, okay, so this is not a, I mean, it's good to show here, this is a known result that the diffusion with some uh, uh, close to an absorbing boundary has this behavior, so, so but it is good to show. In a, and so, and so I just want to introduce uh, something that is not on the slides, but I think I will use the letter later. So actually, if you zoom in the linear part, so, so you say, okay, you will have some, some linear behavior here. That's, that's what this suggests, right? And if you zoom in, you can, uh, you can uh, define somehow the volume, uh, the transacted volume uh, per unit time. So, so, so. You can you can define okay it will be something like this. So what is it final? Uh, right, it will be something like like this. So you look at the slope locally times the, the typical diffusion. So it's okay actually this you can call some type of current, and uh, and actually one can one can. Uh, So, so, okay, this will be the slope. Should I write this all up? I won't write this all up. So what you, what you get is that, that actually, so the slope, if, if you write a bit pay, pay with the thing, you will get a slope which, is, uh, which will be this, I call it L, which will have the following behavior. Uh, behavior, it will be somehow like this. Okay, it doesn't really matter. It's okay. The orders of magnitude are, are clear. So this is the, the slope close to the close to the mid normally. So this, this should be coming from this. Uh, what is interesting is actually just to a bit try to connect to, to to what things that we discussed elsewhere before getting further into model. So okay, you can define some type of slope here, but of course, if you get back, so for example, in a model like in the Kyle, there was a lambda which we defined. Well, it's somehow 
so, so I think the, the inverse of this should be something like the, the lambda there. Of course, we have a completely different model, but this idea how much, uh, how much the, the price should react to, to, um, to a given volume, so how much the price should change, it's the same type of behavior. So some, the, 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 in a collective language, if you have all these different particles in this type of model, you have a mapping from what there was a lambda to, 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 to the inverse of this. Um, but okay, so this is just to say that y y you can map a bit this model, so, 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 so the main variables in one model and the other are, are similar. Yes? So what you say is there are this stuff falling. They are diffusing in both directions, so there is no explicit current coming from elsewhere anywhere. So they are falling. So I think the only thing you care about is that they, in the middle, they annihilate. Okay. And uh, on the boundaries, it's limited. I don't think you really, really care about boundaries. Okay. I think so. I have to think about, because uh, you could have versions of this type of models that like you have two ends of the system and there are currents coming in. So somehow there is, there is a current, but then they are diffusing. I think uh, you don't have to do. Okay. Um, what did I want to say? So okay, we have, we have the, the linearity in, 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 in a, similar model to before, but, but uh, slightly different. And so what you can actually do in this type of thing, just to show, show what, uh, how, how this continues. So of course, what you care about is not now, okay, now we have something that, that we like, so we, yeah? <laughs> the previous slide, um, yes, from the session solutions, I don't think that you were the point sign Unless I wrote something, so okay, let, let, let's talk about this. Here what you say is that I'm one, why is this negative? So I'm, I'm, I'm defining one side, so I'm, I'm on this side, let's say. If y is negative, then this is of course a decrease exponentially. So that's okay. And so what you have on the other side, what you should be having is, uh, well, you flip y in the parentheses. It should work, okay. And, and you flip, uh, so, so it's, it's this type of definition, no? Is it, does it seem okay? Oh, uh, yes, yeah? Okay. I think, I, 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 to me it seems good the way I wrote it, but no, I could have. Because uh, my doubt was only that on both sides there is the quality for zero, and with when the side, uh, which one should you take when? So for the zero, you mean? Yes. Or that it's not larger or yes. that it's equal. Yes. But in zero, it's zero. Everything is zero. Oh, okay. In zero, this is one. Okay. So, which is the definition, the, the way you define the, the, the price is the point where the two densities are the same. Uh, okay, so, so, so we have, again, we have this background system that, uh, that behaves as we like, that, that um, that diffuses, that has a local linear profile. And, and what we want to do is, okay, add a meta-order. So how, how, would, how would adding a meta-order to the system, how would that affect in the same way as before? Uh, exactly because in this numerical model, we discussed that, okay, it's great to have some linear profile, but if things are fluctuating a lot, it's not at all obvious that you, you can really measure this. So numerically it works, but, but there was no analytical solution. So what you can do is that you add an extra current. I think it's written here. Yeah. So you, you have a, an equilibrated market. You just decide and you sell you an extra current which arrives at the transaction price. So it's people really know what they do. They are selling met, setting a meta order on the well, arrived at the transaction price. And, and okay, so we can model it. What we do is simply, okay, there is a delta function here that it has to fall on the current price, 
and, uh, and it has an intensity m, okay? It's, it's with another term. Uh, yeah, I mean, it could be, if you do want to do calculations, yeah, it's a stochastic thing. We, we, we will keep it general. Then sometimes you say that you want to have it to be so constant in time. In yeah. Uh, so, okay, and, and we simplify life a bit. We say, okay, we are close to the best price. That's where we care about things for the moment. But we, then we'll generalize this. What you say is that, okay, locally there, on short times, on short uh, physical scales, well, evaporation and, and deposition locally won't, won't change much. So what we say is that, okay, let's, let's keep only the first and the last term of this equation. Which is actually a nice thing, so, so we, we, for which there are solutions. So this is what's, what's called heat equation. P hat is, okay, sorry, M empty has nothing to do with any price. It's just by chance that I call it M. I should have called it I because it's intensity or something. Oh, well, no, it's M because it's meta order probably. That's why I did it. So, so MT is, a, is an intensity of particles falling to the point defined by, uh, to the point defined by this Dirac. So it's nothing, sorry. Um, so it's not at all a price. And, and okay, so we get this equation to which there are, there are solutions. If, if you put zero here, so this, if there was no uh, meta order coming, then it's, it's, it's traditional heat equation, so the temporal derivative and the, the, the second derivative in, in space. If there is uh, the intensity, you can, you can look up the solution to this. And, uh, and okay, so there is some solution. And, um, sorry, what do I show? Yeah, okay. So, and, okay, so one can look up the solution. So what you get is that, uh, actually, I would like to some, simply get to the last line here. It's, 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 it comes one from the other, is that uh, the behavior of the price will be some integral on this, on this uh, intensity, so this meta order falling. Is it clear what I'm saying? I mean, this is the last equation. Well, you have this one over L here, which is defined on, on the blackboard. And what you're doing is, is, uh, is you have an integral of this, uh, over, o o of this intensity. And okay, and actually, if you want to be, if for, uh, for small impacts, so, so, so when, you're, when you're not impacting too much the price, the stuff which is in the exponential can be, can be forgotten, and you get a model so simple. So, so where are we? We, we? we simplify life, so we say that it's a small impact case, and we are on small times, so the deposition of operation locally do not count too much, right? So it's a simplified life. But what we get back actually is some type of, of, uh, of propagator model, just to, to connect. So, so what you have is that, yeah, so there is a, there, there is a, well, a linear effect. You're just integrating, and you have a one over square root of t behavior here, or t minus s behavior here. Which would be, which would mean that that you have a propagator. So, so, so in the in the language before we, this would mean that G is something like so t minus s to the minus one half, and okay, there is four p and stuff in it. So, so it's you get some propagator. Okay, so so when you're small, the the these impacts add up uh, linearly, but you have a square root decay of impact, which Actually, what we have seen is that what this means is that on the short terms that we are looking, so we, we, we can say that there is diffusivity due to the, the collective motion, but on the short terms, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, this, this, so this is what we call beta in, uh, in another lecture. So, so what you say, it will be a sub-diffusive behavior because you know, well, this we discussed. Is it clear? Are people following me? I hope. Uh, and okay, on long terms, you will have diffusion. So, okay, you have something which is a bit, you, it's not super good. We have to check, okay, in practice, what, on what time scales uh, is there this sub diffusion? Actually, there is a solution to this type of problem, which we won't discuss at all here. But you could say that, 
okay, if, if nu is not one number, but it is, it is very much dependent, it, it has some distribution, you can get to, to a model where, where, uh, where orders are not diffusing really themselves, so there is a fractional diffusion, but you get back a uh, no subdiffusity on short time scales. If anyone's interested, I can give you the reference. It, it's an interesting paper. And, um, and of course, all this is, is valid for if you're doing very slowly, so you're not, uh, not, not kicking too much the system. If you're more aggressive, then this breaks down. Yeah? <coughs> Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so this is, uh, it's, it's not uh, why it implies subdiffusivity because uh, subdiffusivity of the, of the price itself, right? Okay. Uh, why it implies because, um, well, we wrote it up for the actual market, this relation between the, the response the so again, somehow this stuff, so this is a convolution. We have this type of relation. Now, in general, here we don't know what C is, if there has to be a C. But but what you can say is that if G goes with so, so there is the relation with so say if you say that this is so this was the relation that we had for the price to be diffusive. If beta is one half, then gamma has to be zero, actually, in practice. So, so, so it, 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 for no finite uh, value of gamma, can it work? So, so it will always be subdiffusive uh, on short scales. Is this okay? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, what, what we have called the with n t in the previous slide, uh, it's simply the rate at which one makes a meta order. The rate at which so. Uh, probably yes, but I'm not sure. To, to, uh, I tell you, and you tell me if it's the same that you think. So it's yeah, it's the the rate at which these uh, you you make. So you want to do a method, or the rate at which you are making your particles fall in yes. the in the center. Sure. So 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 that's why we say that if your rate is extremely, so if you're extremely aggressive, then 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 this doesn't then then things break down. Then you cannot uh, well then then surely. This, you cannot use this, but you at least have the exponential term. There is also the question if you can eliminate. So we eliminate the deposition and the evaporation terms. Okay. Okay. Could you go back to where we defined the IP? Because it was uh, PP minus we have P. Now, uh, for the Yeah, yt is uh, is 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 so what, how do you so it's the mom so yt is the is the is the current price right in the price at the moment t so we had uh, this p minus p hat. So it's, it's, we, are, we are a bit playing going further, but it, it should be the price. So, so uh, this stuff here, this equation, is the dynamics of the, uh, of the price. Hmm? So, but anyway, I mean, uh, I, I, I want to give the main idea. You don't. Uh, so, so I think I think these are the interesting things, but it's a, so exactly the equations you don't have to check today for tomorrow. It's like, but uh, but okay, just check them. Um, so what did we say? So so okay, so this is what we have for uh, uh, for for when you're pushing the market slowly, and so this is the the behavior in time. And actually, I wanted to show so so how does the it's just uh, of course this means that the, the book is distorted. So all this is understood somehow in my reasoning, but, but this is what one sees in a simulation. So of course, okay, so now we flip this back for visibility, but so you have a local linear profile uh, in an equilibrium book, and then you start kicking it and you put an extra meta order, and you have this type of uh, distortion that, that on one side you will have a higher slope, 
and not necessarily it's, it be, starts to become nonlinear, and and the lower slope on the other side. So well, this is what one expects, but it's it's nice to see in simulation. But the meta order is in. Yeah, sorry, meta order is pushing. Sorry, I didn't define it anywhere. Okay, so the meta order is pushing in this direction. So I mean, it, it's logical. You have a system like this, and you start eating and. Because, okay, this, this part is clear that you're eating into it. Here in the meantime, of course, there is, uh, uh, there is more deposition coming because uh, you, 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 you break the symmetry. You're pushing in one direction, so there are no particles that will come in this way. Uh, okay, and so, so, so a last thing that I wanted to discuss about this uh, model is, is okay, and then you can look at the, the actual impact of a meta order on it. So, so we saw the dynamics of the price, uh, but how does it work? And so I won't go through the equations, but actually one can write up that if you say, okay, let's, let, let's simplify life for calculability. Uh, someone was asking this exactly. So, so you, let, let's say that, okay, you have an, a constant M0. So I mean, constant M. And, uh, and you're executing it this way. So just for, 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 for simplicity, you can do the calculation it's, uh, that, that you will come up with. And you find an impact which is indeed, in all cases, will, uh, here there is a problem. It's some other letter there, uh, J or something. This is a two, no, actually. Th 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 so this capital Q here is a two, forget. So anyway, you have a square root behavior in quantity in both cases. So this is what you were looking for, what we were looking for. Uh, I, I just kill, make the statement we won't study it. And then what's interesting that you will have two type of regimes. In one case, um, in one case when you're very, if you're very aggressive, so this M, 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 M0 is much larger than the typical current that we discussed. Then, then it's exactly square root. It's obvious because it, I mean, it's easy to understand. You have a linear system. And if you're extremely aggressive, you will be, I mean, linear profile, you will be really, nothing else matters, just that you push the price, you will, it will be exactly square root because it's uh, for geometric reasons. So there are no fluctuations that play a role in the simultaneously. Why, if you're below, so if you're slower, if you're slower, then well, the behavior is there, so you have a square root behavior, but you have some, uh, some correction to it, which depends on your intensity. But a weak correction, so we can live with it. It's, it's, it, it might be there empirically. So, so that's where I, so just to summarize this stuff is, okay, so we recover the, the, the square root. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, okay, so, so you recover the square root in this model, so, so it's, it's, it's more, an actual okay microscopic model where you can do where you can solve analytically you don't need to do simulations uh, and there are a big couple of things that actually it's, I mean it's a very rich type of model that you can study that I don't study here is how what does the price do after so how, how does the things relax after you stop, stop, stop trading there was all this question of absence of price manipulation that I discussed several times, but only tangentially, is that, of course, you will, in an actual system, you don't want to be able to well, pump out energy freely. So you don't want to gain money just because of the way, way you push the, the price itself. So this would be price manipulation, which is illegal as well, but it's, you don't want to see, if it works like this, everyone would do this, or at least you would be doing this who understood it. So the, you can, prove that there is absence of price manipulation, meaning that, so what does it mean? You're, let's say you buy a lot and then you sell the same amount. You cannot gain on this consistently. And, the, huh? you, you did it. You did it. <laughs> Not consistently. And, and there is the, the last question, of course, which is all hidden here, is that, that we discuss, again, getting back to this, so what we discuss, it's these intentions. Um, so what we call latent volume. Of course, if you want to, well, there would be one step from this is get, okay, how does, what's the relation between latent volume that you do not really see but, but affects the market and the revealed volume, right? Latent volume is all the things that people want to do but they don't do it in the given moment, they react a bit later, so as the 
So this volume will be here, but only if the price comes closer that it will realize. But so what is the mapping from one to the other? It's, it's, a, it's an important question. And we won't discuss it here. Uh, so did this make sense? Okay. Um, so okay, I would stop there with new things. Of course, if you have any questions, we will answer that. And I wanted to summarize a bit. So I remove everything. Okay, so I'll try to write up what I have in mind about the relation of all these things, and then you. By the way, does, does it make so? So, so, so the, okay, we had eight lectures. So does it make sense where we went from and where we wanted to go? I mean, where we went from, where we got to. It's not an exam question. Is, is, is it? I mean, you don't have to come out here and do it. But do, 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 do you guys? Do you have the time to think about this? Is there someone who says yes? You don't have to say yes. It's, it's really no. <laughs> someone said explicitly no. I'm not saying nothing. I'm saying nothing. I'm not saying nothing is no. Okay, so I'm a bit sorry about that. Okay, so I'll, I'll write it up. Then you tell me if it's uh, so. So, okay, what what did we do? We we, we spent a lot of time. So, so we had uh, all this uh, empirical. Uh, results, right? We spent, I don't know, well, there were several cases of empirical, but we started, spent like the first two, two lectures on this. Well, one has to understand what, what are the empirical things, and so what was it? Okay, we said that there is di diffusivity, said it many times, and probably for us this was Z, V, T, which is so uh, unpredictability, okay? Un Fred. This is what, how, how we think about it. Uh, and there were other things which are, which are important to know, but we didn't follow up too much. So there was, uh, well, it's extremely important for any modeling, these fat tails. And we discussed the question of, uh, okay, that, that even on relatively long time scales, the central limit theorem doesn't, uh, doesn't hold because you have correlations in the system, right? And what were these correlations? Where it, they were correlations in the size of moves. So there was this, what we call the volatility clustering, meaning that, that, that volatile periods are, are, are for sure, sometimes you have uh, a volatile period, then you have a non-volatile, so it's, it's correlated in time. Uh, these are clear, I mean, we can also go back to the figures if, if if anyone has doubts about these things, but I, th okay, if you want to go back to the figures, you tell me. You could go back to the figures for volatility. <coughs> okay, so it's, it's this type of behavior. Uh, we had two type of figures, but this, so, so that there, that, so what is volatility? It's the, Size of the moves. Let's forget the sign, typical size, as we use it in English. So, I mean, in everyday language as well. And so that, okay, here you have a 100-year period. There are vis visibly periods when it's, things are much more volatile, and visibly periods when things are much more calm. This would be the case for a, for a random walk. Uh, so this is what we call so volatility is clustered in time. And we, show, we saw here that actually, you, okay, that's on 100 years, this is on five minutes, but you have, okay, it's less, visually less obvious, but you have the same. You have a period here when it's very calm, a period when it's very, well, so, so, so on all scales you seem to have this. You can, of course, define this as the autocorrelation of the volatility, which will be a very slowly decaying correlation, visually. Most of the models we saw had a correlation in the signs of the orders. Yes, which is, okay, we'll get to this. 
Okay, we will get to this in a second. So I just want to, so, so there were these, we discussed something which sort of seemed, it was a bit side question, just I think it's this. So the question of, of, of the correlation matrices. It was the only time when we discussed the uh, non-single product behavior. I think it was okay in its own to understand, but, and okay, so essentially there was this apps effect maybe, but okay. Right, so there, there were these things and, and I guess the main, well, okay. My reasoning is the following, okay, so there was this main question of, okay, so why are prices really unpredictable? Why are prices diffusive? And so we try to, to, to answer this, so, so okay. Why diffusive? My prices are diffusive. And so, so okay, this is where we go to a type of modeling which you hated, which is this type of economic type of model. So say, okay, there is this uh, traditional picture. Which is uh, fundamental efficiency. Okay. So what was this? Well, it was. It was. Uh, it was uh, this type of strange model. It's strange, and it's not, not, not super scientific, but that's the canonic way of looking at it is that prices contain information. So the price is, okay, uh, in a simplified way, contain all info. And it's somehow this, this underlying, so there is an underlying process of information or fundamental price. And so it says that, okay, there is an underlying process which is unpredictable. Which some people know. So there are some chosen people who know this and they follow it. Okay? The, the, claim, the claim is okay. And so there were several critiques of this already in the economics literature. So, so uh, well, not very scientific. Uh, I don't even, well, it's okay if I say, you know, I don't want to write too much. That it's not very scientific. No, there was this 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 this, this reasoning of okay, let, let, so let's go to some uh, uh, so, so some um, quantitative ideas. So there was this type of but what he said is yeah, okay, you can define these efficient markets, but how? What, what does efficiency mean? It might mean that well, the price and this really underlying true value are not more than hundred percent away. So it's. Not, 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 not extremely scientific and we, uh, okay, I don't have it here. Maybe I really said it, but so uh, you can come up on what time scale should, uh, should prices really follow this and you, you see that it doesn't work. And there were also, so in, in the economics language, there were these puzzles. Okay, we actually explicitly discussed two of these puzzles. So one was, uh, well, because in economics you call these puzzles, the one was excess volatility. So if, um, if prices can only move when, when there is this underlying, uh, when there is a real news coming in, then why are prices so volatile? So if real news comes much less often, why, are, why do prices move so much? In the same language, why do people trade so much? If, if, if it's very rare to, to have real news coming. And something that we didn't discuss, uh, but I want to mention that of course, so I mean, we saw that prices behave in a diffusive manner on the timescales that we, we cared about. But of course, on long times, we also saw this in the beginning, there, <coughs> there are trends in prices. You can see that, that on, uh, on uh, several years, prices typically are going up. Sometimes there are crashes, but typically they are going up. This doesn't matter so for diffusivity, we're okay, because so, so, so the, the fluctuations are much larger than the typical trend, so it's all, only on, on several, on a decade or more that you can see this, but there is something that, that sort of contradicts this, this idea that it's only when it, there is a news. If, if it's only real news that govern the prices, this type of behavior shouldn't be there. Also, and there is, okay, existence of bubbles. So there are other things which, which you can use to critique this. 
but uh, okay. And so what we said is that we said one type of solution, so one solution at least to why people are trading so much. And this was these, uh, so what we call models to incorporate information. Okay, so there is this Kyle and Gloucester Milgram type of model, so which can give intuition, but, but is it readable? But so one solution to this, uh, to at least why people are trading so much, is that, okay, there are noise traders. And it's them who trade so much. So, 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 so we, okay, we found the, the culprit for, for, for one part of the thing. Well, it's, it's strange. So we, we discuss the critics of all these type of models. Why should be people either noise either or inform, informed? But okay, so that's one type of solution, more more economics way. And we, but we went into another direction. We, 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 apart from these puzzles that were here, we, we showed another, I think, quite explicit contradiction, which was the, uh, what we call the long memory. So this is what Gabriel was asking. Right, so so here we, I mean, yes, incorporate. Um, so this explicit, so, so it's not just a puzzle, it, there is an explicit contradiction. If the decision of people are made on much longer timescales if people are, have a big decision but execute it on several days, which causes this, then it, you cannot have all information in the prices, okay? On, 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 on micro scale. No. Uh, yes. Yes, so what I say here is that what does it mean that all information in the, are contained in, in the prices? Well, it's not a super clear claim, but what is sure that if, if what you want to do now is uh, buy 10,000 of something, but what you can, every day you are able to buy only 30 because there is no one else to really sell more than, more to you, so it will be for more than 30 days you'll be buying. There is no way that the, the price incorporates the information that you want to buy 1,000 in the beginning, right? You could say that, oh, okay, on some longer time scales, it could be the case, but, but on minute, hour, day, time scale, for sure not. There, there is, it cannot be the case. In the model of fundamental efficiency, uh, there is some uh, incorporated the statistical efficiency, the informational efficiency, and uh, the efficient market model. They are different, type, okay. Uh, I'll get to this at the very end. Um, not really, so when efficiency is different type of definitions of what there is, but, but no, so statistical efficiency doesn't say anything about the cause. That's why we will get to it. It says, okay, statistically you measure this, it will be always the case, but it's, it's, it doesn't say the underlying reason. Okay, so, 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 so here we had a clear contradiction, and there, there, so in my mind, the direction where we went to is, uh, is uh, there were also questions of orders of magnitude here, but, uh, why it has to be the case that you cannot have all information. What we did is, okay, another way to, to, to uh, so, so an alternative view to this is, is the question of impact, or the idea of impact, okay? Which is a completely different idea, so, 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 so it's an alternative view, I would say. It's, it's a much more physics approach, if you want. So what we said is that, okay, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not some of this underlying uh, fundamental value that counts and uh, that people are following, but it's, 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 it's actually order flow which moves the prices, right? In the system. And, and regardless of information. So, okay, that's uh, regardless. 
So this type of modeling says that, okay, so if there is something, you, you break the balance of supply and demand, that, or, or, or you change the balance uh, that pushes the price, and it doesn't matter if someone is informed or not. You don't have to have a model of noise traders and informed traders and this type of modeling. Uh, but it of course also means that if the price is a result of what the others do, well, what you want to predict is more what the others do than some uh, fundamental idea. I don't try this here, but it is sort of comes. And, and okay, and it has a lot of, of, of further suggestions. I mean, it means that things, okay, it means that things will be more endo than exo. More, right? So, so the the dynamics will be endogenous, rather. If 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 it's uh, if it's the actions of each person that that uh, each trader that 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 drives the prices, then then you ac expect the system to 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 be endogenous, and um, or mostly, no, not not all has to be endogenous, and. Um, and okay, we will get some to other points here. And so what this suggests here is that okay, well, orders flow moves prices. We didn't say, but okay, why do we have diffusivity? Well, this is where it says that it is just a statistical effect. So this is what is called more statistical efficiency in in um, in economics. That that it's it's uh, uh, that it's actually people finding inefficiencies and trading. To exploit these, which remove the inefficiencies. Okay, you find that you can buy very cheap. You will go and buy very cheap, and you will be pushing the price up. And after a while, you cannot buy cheap anymore. So it will be, it will go away. And that it's continuously, people are continuously looking for this. So it's, it's a statistical effect. It's not some uh, uh, fundamental effect like this. And so, okay, it's also important to say what, what were the facts that we have seen. So this, this is the idea behind it. What were the, the, the empirical facts that we have seen? It was uh, for, uh, well, we saw, uh, okay, empirically what we discussed is uh, single trade impact, so impact of single trades and, uh, and trying to model how this can lead still to efficient, efficient prices. So there are all these propagator models, so, so these phenomenological models. Uh, and we saw that there is an effect of conditioning. Uh, okay, is it? I mean, uh, ask me if there are things which are not clear. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about things that we discussed, so I'm just saying uh, keywords. And then there was the, the other point, uh, the, the meta, the so, so looking at meta orders, where it's not the conditioning that counts, but it's real uh, a true response in the system, and there was this square root impact. Okay? So this is uh, what we did. So, so I, th I think so sort of the main claims here that I will get back to in a second, just uh, I feel this, but that this picture against this picture, right? So to have two alternative ways of, of discussing. And then, okay, so from here, we discussed these two types of models. So one was, uh, let's say, phenomenological. Or I don't know what's a good name, but so propagator and company. And there were more uh, microscopic. or agent-based in another for another community. It's more this way, agent-based models which which were which we discussed yesterday and today. Okay. So so, so th th this was the, the sort of the, the, the map for me. I don't know if it was a map for you. Uh, I don't know if it makes sense now. So I mean the, if, if there are logical connections for you. Yes, this. Yes. Well, it's, it's essentially because of this point. That if you say that, that so, so what the price is, uh, the, the way prices move is that there is some fundamental news coming and this news, all news is incorporated in the price. That's what uh, leads it. 
immediate, I mean, or on short scales, of course. You, you, of course, you can define this, this the prices inform contain information and follow some fundamental value on the scale of seven years. But that's not a really, mo I mean, it doesn't mean much. Sure, you can always increase the time scale and say this is true on, a, on the history of human beings, but then. Yeah, so what it says is that, that it's this, there is this underlying process which is the fundamental value. It follows something, but that's what's unpredictable. It only changes when there is a new news, com, news coming. But so, so, the, so, so the, these, these, are, these are weakly scientific claims. So that's why, I mean, that's why you have problems with it because these claims are like that. I mean, uh, that's why we are trying to do another approach. So it's completely okay to, yeah. And? Sell all together. But you would be pushing then the price down when you're selling. Yeah, but if I sell, then uh, what happens afterwards is not my problem. Okay, so, so it's, it's a question not related to this. It's a, it's a, you want to go and make money now. <laughs> uh, it's, 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 well, this is what I call price manipulation. Well, if, okay, so, so side remark to answer this. What you would expect if, uh, if some picture like this, Let, let's say, you're pushing the price up when you're buying, okay? You did this, it's, this should be a square root. You stop here and when you say, okay, great, I pushed up the price, let's sell it now, right? Actually, you can calculate that the average of this will, would be somewhere here. Uh, what would happen is, of course, sure, it would be great to sell here, but now you want to sell the same stuff, so what will happen is this what you will do to the price. And this will be the final, in a simple picture, this will be the final price. In practice, probably you would push the price even more in a model like, like, like this latent order book because you, it's not balanced in this moment. But okay, let's forget this. So what you will say is you will buy here and actually this would be somehow the average. You would be selling here. So you're losing money. And this is, but you expect from a model like this to, if your impact were linear, you did this, at least you would be paying and it would be the same. And if it, but, uh, okay. Um, okay, so, 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 so this is somehow the map uh, that, that, that I, I had in mind uh, here. So think about it a bit. Uh, if, if it makes sense. And so, so okay, what is the final claim? Is uh, that we have two views. So one is this traditional picture. One is a more physics-like picture that, that, that it's an endogenous process. And what, what the result is that you have actually two sort of self-consistent ideas. One is the economics idea. The one is the more that it's, it's impact that drives prices and the statistical efficiency comes from, uh, from, from, from people using the arbitrage opportunity. So you have these two things. Of course, just, just understand this. So, so this means that there is an underlying price some coming from somewhere else. It's, it's this fundamental information. So actually, in, in the language or the language level here, you would say that it's a price discovery that happens. So the price exists, but and people have to discover it. And uh, so that's, that's, that's the way people talk in economics. And here you would say that it's more like price formation. This is only a question of language, but it, it, it shades lights on, 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 on what we're saying. And uh, which means that, okay, prices would exist without trading and prices only exist because you're trading. And there is no, we didn't give a final answer. We sort of showed two, two views on this. And okay, what I think is that, uh, well, it's, it's easier, it's more, much more plausible to have a type of model like this, which also matters. It's not just what your predictions do, how they work, but also it, it's more plausible, but okay, this is a, uh, one may argue against it. And also we have, so there are all these different puzzles that one can come out, so empirical facts, 
we seem to explain much more empirical effects in this picture than in this picture. But okay, it's, it's an open discussion, and, and I'm saying this, but uh, people working in finance, probably much more of them uh, would believe in this picture. For now. And what else did I want to say? Well, okay, so, so things, just, just, just some keywords that, that uh, if you come from physics, can be important. So I said that this is an endogenous process. Uh, mostly, which means that there will be, of course, uh, feedbacks uh, between the different actors, and you can you can easily have, for example, model bubbles in a system like this if people's actions change the price, and people, of course, can look at each other what the others are doing, and there can be herding effects and feedback loops. Uh, what we have also seen, actually, which is interesting, but it comes from the model here, is that well, in these models. To find the diffusivity, it means that actually you, you, you are in a very strange uh, uh, point. So you have some, some state variable that, that, that you can look at. You seem to be what we call around a critical point. For example, in this latent order book model, we have seen that, that to have diffusive prices with, uh, with this autocorrelated order flow, you have th there has to be a parameter. We can define which parameter exactly, if it's the decay of the impact or what. Which, which is at its some, some critical value, which means that, of course, you, ex you expect the system to be super fragile, that the small changes, the behavior of the system can change a lot. So, okay, it's, it's, it's super interesting for, for analyzing, I think, and it's also important for, uh, for regulation. So it means that, okay, understanding more this type of, this fragility in the system and these endogenous loops uh, and feedback loops can help you devise better rules, better, fee system maybe, so you want to avoid people trading too much without much information. Uh, you could put an extra, and there are fees. I mean, you could say, okay, you can trade, but you have to, every time you come and trade with me, you can have to pay 50 cents. So you will only do if you think that you can gain more than 50 cents and others. So, so it, there is a, a strong uh, effect on regulation of all this. And, and so I would say that's it. A general conclusion from this is like, the way I started is that, if you have a system in which there are many things that you do not understand, probably it's better not making big theories like this, but more try to look at the data and try some simple microscopic models. So with all the microscopic models we had did not contain some specific intelligence. We said, okay, what can we explain without intelligence? Of course, you can look at what didn't I explain and think get better things, but it is a trivial claim, but good to keep in mind that if you don't understand things, then try to not come up with great big theories. So that's what I wanted to say. Uh, okay, if you have 15 minutes, I mean, if you have questions, come up with them. So, yeah. Come up with this or in general? Um, but first about this, but if not general, then I wanted to say a few points, but it's yeah? What? No, no, everyone started. <laughs> So if you do a meta order or if you do a yes. one shot, it, uh, it's not, it's very different, right? It's very, very different, but we, we, don't, we don't have a, uh, from impact formula, we cannot. We cannot have a very big, very clear relation between the two. So, so there was this type of picture that we had that, that uh, so the volume is, right. okay, we said this late, there is a latent volume and there is an actual somehow visible volume. So what does latent volume mean? That there are these people and they, might realize if you do, re, re, uh, not realize, so, so uh, it, it's in Italian, to, to realize themselves, it's uh, to, 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 to come to the market, sorry? So exactly, so if you want to trade a quantity of, of this much, okay, let's say this much, so, so the integral here, if you do it one shot, you will push the price here, okay? You take the, it's, it's a trivial case, you take the volume which is there, no one has time to react. While in this, 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 this is caricature plot, the, the, to get the same amount of volume, if you're integrating on the blue, you would be, I don't know, doing this. So what you think is that if you do trading slowly, you will impact less because people have the time to come there and provide liquidity to you. 
there is no one to one correspondence, but actually you would in practice never do the white uh, solution. Yeah. You, you wanted something, no? Okay. Um, okay, so I wanted to say uh, two things. One is, a, okay, one is a very general thing is that uh, I, I don't know how, how to do it, but uh, if you have feedback on any of this or on, I mean, on the lecture, it would be good to have them. I don't know, you know my email, you can send it. I, I don't know, the, there is no prescribed way doing it here, but if you feel, I would be very happy to get any feedback now or, I mean, or after the exam, of course, as <laughs> yes, you like. It, it doesn't matter, of course, but whenever, so just <laughs> really. And I just wanted to list a few things that we didn't discuss, which could be interesting for people, if you don't have questions. Is, is the effect of, uh, if, sorry? Exactly, so it, it's, it's this type of, that, that if there is a, uh, well, there is a good word for this which doesn't come to my mind. Uh, um, well, anyway, if, if there is a, an arbitrage opportunity, so if there is an opportunity to gain, to make a gain uh, in the market, by the fact that your trading will move the prices, exactly in the direction against your, uh, against the, the, the arbitrage opportunity. So on some scale, it will be eliminated. Of course, it doesn't say that it will be exactly diffusive, but it still, it gives a, gives a framework why these do not exist for long times. And what you say is that every, so there are all these people in the markets looking for uh, opportunities. They can be machines or people. So the simple opportunities will be gone. And then don't misunderstand me. Of course, the fact that we are talking about diffusivity here doesn't mean that locally there are no predictable patterns on higher, I mean, with, with better statistical methods. There are, of course. They, they are very hard to. Exactly. And, and for example, for that, if you measure I mean, it's so, so it's a bit tautology because if you know that diffusivity is here and know that long memory is here, there somewhere has to be something which, which counterbalances this long memory. And in practice, for example, you can measure that indeed um, the, the reacts, so, 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 the, so the way the, the, the price and also others, because the price reacts the way others react. So the way the price react to a trade which is very predictable is very different from when it was unpredictable. So if you have a strong predictability and the, predictab and, and, and the prediction realizes, the, the response in the system is very different from when it doesn't realize. It's sort of tautology. It has to be the case if you want to get diffusivity. But you can, you, you, you can measure this and you can, uh, uh, so, so that's why the answer is, in an empirical level, it's simply this. And why it is the case? Well, because people, know that, for, so in this case, it would be people know that, uh, that, um, that, that, that your actions will affect the market. So they have an expectation of what will happen and they will change their behavior if their expectation doesn't realize. Okay, we can continue or we can... Uh... Okay, yeah. In practice. Yes. I mean, these two tendencies are something that... Sorry, what, what do you mean by the two tendencies? Uh, traders and criticality of... Uh, so so by, 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 by loops, I mean, if, I mean, it's that there is feedback in the system. Yes, of course. And... Um, uh, okay, I'm not sure I get the question.
No, no, they do not regulate. No, 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 sorry, sorry. Understanding what's going on oh, okay. can help you come up with good regulation. Oh, okay, okay. So if I am, uh, uh, well, probably I want a very good example yeah. in this moment, but, but, but you know that the, the, the market is very fragile, so typically the response of the system is yes. in a way, but sometimes if there is a small fluctuation, it can be completely different and there can be huge jumps in the prices. You can come up with an idea in terms of regulation, so of course these are particles falling in the model that we discussed, but these are people, we can tell them, okay, if you fell down, you have to stay there for 10 minutes, or some regulation rules um, to, 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 to make the system more stable. So it's, it's, it's not auto-regulating, this research can help you come up with ideas how to regulate the system, because, because then we are back to the original question that, okay, it's not just, a, of course we can model it in a reaction diffusion model, but it's, uh, it's real money that can be lost for certain people and real economies that can. Okay, and so I just, I, I wrote a list of stuff that I, that we didn't, so something that we, I wanted to discuss, we didn't discuss at all, but okay. So of course, you can go in the same type of picture further. You have an idea of the price, how the price behaves given that you're trading, and now let's say that you really have one day to buy a given quantity you can come up with optimization. So there is the, a field which is called optimal execution. How should you be trading if you want to minimize the way you yourself are impacting the price? So you want to put your trades the further apart so that the system forgets you maybe. But at the same time you want to get, you want to be able to sell all or buy all you wanted. So you, there is a final condition and th th there are difficult optimization problems that can, one can come up. I thought I would show some things on this, but okay, I think you can live without. Several, more, for the limit order book, there are several queuing models to understand how the different orders, uh, until when do you want to stay in a queue, when do you want to get out because it's too long and you want to do another action, stuff like this. Uh, and then some, th there are some other completely different questions that we didn't discuss, I just wanted to mention, which I mean, I think for physicists can be, or math physics can be interesting. So there is all a field of derivative pricing and, and, and company, which we didn't discuss. So normally it's, uh, well, it's somehow based on the fact that you say that there is no arbitrage that you can consistently do in the market. So if, uh, if, uh, if the, you have three products, A, B, and C, and, and then there is some linear combination between them, so A plus B gives C, or so in a very simple, it's not so simple, but if there is any linear combination of products that gives another product, that gives you a condition on the fact that the price, a condition on the pricing that you cannot have the, the, the basket, which is the same, to the, the same as another product, must have the same price. So it's, it's, there, there are some underlying interesting things. We didn't discuss about uh, risk measures at all, so we discussed only volatility as, as, as some type of measure, so variance of, of uh, of price, sometimes of uh, measure of risk, but of course, if you have fat tails, you can do much better. We didn't discuss again, so I, I mentioned here, but all these uh, herding models, so so way there are uh, there are feedbacks and collective phenomena in, in markets. We didn't discuss this all, and there is a big literature. Uh, we didn't discuss nonlinear correlations. Actually, there was a question once. We discussed correlations, but only at the linear level. So you could, if you have fat tails, you could do better to to understand interdependencies. Uh, there is a very big, uh, many people working on, on, well, getting more to, to economics or so network systems, a system in which, well, some network mm -hmm. interactions and looking at phase transitions on these systems, etc. What else did I write? Okay, one thing that was mentioned, but we didn't go into this direction at all, so the, the correlations we met mentioned the portfolio optimization problem, it was in a tutorial, which, okay, one can, it, it, it can be, quite well mapped to, to spin glass problems, so it's, it's very much physics-like approaches. And then there, are, and so this is more the finance questions, and then there is a lot of, there are a lot of things more in economics, so, so studying the distribution of wealth in a society and how you can get the, what you see empirically and getting to more these macroeconomic models, so to model, there are many physicists working on, there is this, uh, general equilibrium models in economics, which say that there is an equilibrium with very mild fluctuations around it. Try to make these models better, and with, via this, via this have uh, predictions on, on inflation and monetary policy, so it's completely the other side of the picture. It's not uh, finance on the small scales, but economics on, on, on large scales. There is also 
there are many, many things to be done. So it's a bit uh, similar. Approaches are a bit like this, and the world is very different. So okay, I just wanted to list these things. Uh, if, you, if someone's interested to go into other directions, yeah. Uh, yeah, so on what level do you ask? Because uh, it can, this question can be like who to work with no, no, no. or to... No, no. Like what, what should we study, what it's like to work in this field? Yeah, yeah, but so you're talking about economic research or, or moving into finance? It's, 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 it's which part of it? Maybe both. Okay, so well, what to study? I don't have a good answer to this because, I mean, I just listed these things. It's, 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 there are enormous amount of different things that can be studied, so more at the end of macroeconomic systems, which actually I do not know much about, which is, I think, it can be super interesting, so to understand uh, how, how an entire economy behaves and how to model it. And as I said, the, there is the other end uh, on, the, on the micro scale. And in between, there are many, many things. So, and, and my interest is more on the micro scales. I, I'm more interested in these impact models, but okay, that's a question of taste. So, uh, so, so yeah, to the question of what to work on, I don't really have a good suggestion. I can say some groups where I think there is interesting research going on. Um, I don't know if that interests you or... Okay. For example, do we need a PhD or is it better to take a PhD? Okay. Okay, so okay, there are two sides. One, you can work in academia on more like this, what is we call econophysics, even if it's not, sometimes it's not econo, but more the finance of well, whatever. Uh, and you can go to work in, uh, in a company doing finance. If you work in a company doing finance, I guess it's better having, at least, okay, the place I work at, you go, you, you should have a PhD. Often it's even good that if you, have, if you have a postdoc, but you should have a PhD in whatever. It doesn't matter, I mean, in physics, great. Um, and uh, and I think there are two approaches. So one one can go to work in finance in a bank, which might be much more mathematical than physical. I mean, more more math than physics. So it's more mathematical finance. And so, okay, I have a biased view, but my view of it is it's 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 a less of a creative work, more. Uh, there are existing models that have to be followed, and then you can do calculations on those. There are existing models because they are strongly regulated. So in a bank, you cannot come up with a completely, you can come up with a completely new risk model, but, but they don't really want you to because the regulation says that this type of model should be used, and so they prefer that you use that. While in a hedge fund, for example, what I work in, it's much less regulated and your research is much more free. So if you come up with, uh, with new ideas in, any, in any, type of, uh, any type of new ideas, if they work and if they make sense, and so on, then, 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 then they are good and usable. Um, so this is completely two com quite different worlds for me. Um, but in any case, yeah, probably having a PhD is useful and uh, Okay, I don't have very general remarks on this. I mean, we can, we can chat afterwards, but uh, okay, I don't know, unless if it's, everyone is interested in this question. One thing is that, uh, so if you want to go into, so, so th there is the other direction, is, is that you stay in academia, but work on these questions. I mean, most of the things that we discussed here, you can do perfectly research on it in, acad in an academic world. That's one thing, and it's very good. If you move to finance, I think there is, there, there is hard, it's hard to, get back. So it, it, it's be, that's also why I think after a PhD it's good maybe to even do a postdoc so that uh, unless you're completely sure that this is your direction because it's easy to move in one direction but harder to move back. Okay. Um, so thank you very much for, uh, for these two weeks.